Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ishraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. Habibi ilahi al-alameen abu al-Qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad al-Alameen. وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم I won't take up your time tonight I know some of you are tired and we still have a couple of more items uh, in the program I'd like to begin tonight by sharing with you a poem that I wrote uh, in, in, in relation to tonight's event, the birth of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam The poem is entitled She is the doyan of every woman and miss Meaning she is Sayyida to Nisa al-Alameen The light of Lady Fatima shines forth tonight Her story with great honor to you I recite. The archangel descends on Muhammad and states, For you I have God's message and divine dictates. To you and Khadija the Lord sends his praises. The hadith says that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send the prophet Jibra'il down, he would specifically ask Jibra'il to send the Lord's salams not only on the Prophet but also on Khadija alayhi salam. To you and Khadija, the Lord sends his praises. Your status in God's eyes with these words he raises. I bring down to you from the garden a platter prepared specially for an important matter. God commands that from this heavenly food you eat and from it you will produce a special gamete and from it you will produce a special gamete. The child will be Zahra al-Kawthar al-Batul. The child will be Zahra al-Kawthar al-Batul. Special leaders will come from her prepared to rule. Ahmed did exactly as he was instructed. Ali's love by God was now being constructed. Ahmed did exactly as he was instructed. Ali's love by God was now being constructed. The day came, Khadija is ready to give birth. The day came, Khadija is ready to give birth. The great lady from heaven now appears on earth. The angels, the angels rejoice. They yell, Fatima is here. The angels rejoice. They yell, Fatima is here. Muhammad then whispers the adhan in her ear. Her mother's heart is filled with unmatched joy and glee. Her mother's heart is filled with unmatched joy and glee. Finally, God has fulfilled His promised decree. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Ahmed was told, We've given you an abundance, dear Prophet. Behold, she was a source of delight for her father's heart. From her father's side, Fatima would not depart. She was a source of delight for her father's heart. From her father's side, Fatima would not depart. And how could she do so? 
for she was part of him. Fatima to Rav'atun Minni, the Prophet says. And how could she do so? For she was part of him, connected to his pure soul, more close than a limb. He gave her the title of her father's mother, Ummu Abiha. He gave her the title of her father's mother. You see, the care she gave him was like no other. All he had to do was to take a look at her face. All he had to do was take a look at her face. All of his problems simply her smile would erase. The days passed by and Fatima became of age. The days passed by and Fatima became of age. Which of the world's best women would Fatima engage? One by one, they each proposed, but to no avail. One by one, they each proposed, but to no avail. You see, the Prophet's soul, the Prophet's soul needs his self to balance the scale. One by one, they each proposed, but to no avail. The Prophet's soul needs his self to balance the scale. Wait, hold on, Ali is the Prophet's self, you ask? Wait, hold on, Ali is the Prophet's self, you ask? Yes, my dear friend, remember the Mubahala task? Yes, dear friend, remember the Mubahala task? You know in the Quran that's published in Saudi, Okay, okay, I'll stop before it gets rowdy. <laughs> then came Zainab. So Fatima. So Fatima married Ali, Abu al-Hasnain. So Fatima married Ali, Abu al-Hasnain. Then came, then came Zainab, Umm Kulthum, Hassan, and Hussein. So Fatima married Ali, Abu al-Hasnain. Then came Zainab, Umm Kulthum, Hassan, and Hussein. All in all, she lived a total of 18 years. All in all, she lived a total of 18 years, excelling in her life and in all of its spheres. Tonight, we celebrate Lady Fatima's birth. Tonight, we celebrate Lady Fatima's birth. Let's attempt to learn more and understand her worth. No speech. Words, tweet, or tag will define who she is. No speech, words, tweet, or tag will define who she is. She is the doyen of every woman and miss. She is the doyen of every woman and miss. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. This morning, when I woke up, I asked myself a pressing question. You see, every time I have a lecture or a presentation, I ask myself this question. What am I going to talk about? And I've probably done this maybe hundreds of times. Every time I have a lecture, I ask myself, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to say? But today's question was different. Because today I didn't ask myself, what am I going to talk about? Today I asked myself, who am I going to talk about? We celebrate the birth of Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayha salam tonight. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. It is recorded in the books of hadith that belong to all of the different schools of thought within Islam that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Fatima to Sayyidati Nisa il Alamina min al Awalina il al Akhri. Fatima is the leader, the doyan of the women of the world from the beginning of creation until the end of creation, making her what? Simply, the Prophet is saying that she is the best of the best. That she is the best of creation. And so what do you say about the best of creation?
How do you introduce such an individual? How do you introduce such a great personality? In the famous hadith, Al-Kisa, which perhaps all of you have read, which is basically Fatima alayhi salam is narrating a story, an incident that happened in her home where the Prophet and Amirul Mu'mineen and her and her two sons, Hassan and Hussein, where they got together and the Prophet gathered them under what? The kisa, which was a sheet or a covering. In this hadith, Hadithul Kisa, after they are all gathered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, May my peace and mercy and blessings be upon this group of people who are under the kisa, under the cover. And then the hadith says what? The hadith says that the angel Jibra'il alayhi salam, he asks, وَقَالَ الْأَمِينُ Jibra'il alayhi salam, يَا رَبِّ وَمَنْ هُمْ تَحْتَ الْكِسَاءِ Who are these people who are covered together, who are together? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he answers. Jibra'il, he asks the Lord, he says, who are these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answers. He says, هُمْ فَاطِمَةً وَأَبُوهَا وَبَعْلُهَا وَبَنُوهَا They are Fatima and her father and her husband and her sons. The greatness of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who we believe to be the greatest individual, the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah introduces this family, this group, He introduces them with the pinnacle being whom? Not the Prophet, but the pinnacle being Fatima. He says, they are Fatima and her father and her husband and her, and her children. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces the great personality of Fatima al-Zahra She has many titles. There are many titles that Lady Fatima alayhi salam acquired during her short lifespan. Two of these very important titles are al-Radiya al-Mardiya, which mean the one who was pleased, al-Radiya al-Mardiya, the one who is the object of God's pleasure. So both she was pleased and she was also the object of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Why is this? It's because Fatima alayhi salam in her life, she embodied contentment because she was satisfied. Because Fatima alayhi salam was satisfied, she embodied contentment in her life this is why she was known as al-Radiya and al-Mardiya. She was pleased, she was content, she was satisfied, and God was satisfied with her. This is why in the other hadith, the very famous and well-documented hadith, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Allahumma salam He says, Inna Allah yarza li rida Fatima. This is a profound statement. This is a profound statement by the Prophet. He says, God Himself, the Lord of the universe, the majestic King, the Lord of creation, He is pleased with that which Fatima is pleased with. Can you get, can it get better than that? Absolutely not. Here, there are many lessons that can be drawn from this besides the fact that this tells us very clearly without a shadow of a doubt that Fatima alayhi salam is purely infallible. She is absolutely infallible with not even a small amount of room for mistakes or errors because it would not be reasonable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure to be connected with the pleasure of someone who might make a mistake or, he, or who might even think of committing a mistake. Besides, proving that she is infallible, this shows us the status of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and how she lived her life in a way that she was always content, she was always satisfied and as a result God was satisfied with her. Look at history. Fatima alayhi salam never in history in her short 
lifespan, never did she complain one day. Our dear youth speaker said, mentioned earlier about complaining, right? Many of us, we complain. Fatima alayha salam, she never complained, although she lived a very difficult life. She didn't have it easy. She had it a very difficult life. She faced many obstacles, many challenges in her life. Yet Fatima alayha salam, she never complained. She was always satisfied. She was always content with Allah, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed for her. And this is an important lesson that we learn, brothers and sisters. An important lesson that we learn from the personality of Lady Fatima alayha salam is that we strive towards contentment because our traditions, the Qur'an and the prophetic teachings and the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, they emphasize on this point, on the point that we are to develop this spiritual state of contentment and satisfaction, to be satisfied with whatever God decrees, whatever God decides. Also, Another issue that's related is known as al qanaa to be content, to be satisfied with that which you have been given. Most of the problems, brothers and sisters, if each of us thinks about our own problems in life, we'll notice that the vast majority of our problems are due to one primary reason, and that is when we are dissatisfied when we are discontent, when we are dissatisfied, this causes problems for us, brothers and sisters, and we begin to stress about life. Look at all of the different types of stress that we have related to life's issues. We stress about school, we stress about exams. I know some people who, when they know they have exams, in a few days, in a couple of weeks, sometimes in a couple of months, what happens to them? They begin to stress, they can't focus, they can't function anymore. They're thinking about this exam, what am I going to do? Am I going to pass? Am I not going to pass? And they're constantly stressing over and over and over again. We stress about whether we're going to get a good job or not. Will this interview go well? Will they hire me? Will they not hire me? What will I do? Where will I live? Will I get married or will I not get married? Incidentally, just yesterday, a young woman sent me an email complaining about certain issues that she was facing in her life and she asked for some advice. Basically, she was saying that she had met someone, a young man, and she said, this, this man is a very good man, he's pious, he taught me about religion, he brought me towards religion, I was far away, Islam was not important for me, faith was not important for me, but through my interactions with this young man, he was able to draw me closer to God, to give me a stronger sense of piety, and I'm very much attached to him, but I'm afraid of the consequences, I'm afraid that it's not going to work out, that we will not be able to get married. Because, God forbid, I'm afraid that his parents will not be okay with me. They will not accept me into their family. And this is the words that she used. She said, I think about this all the time to the point where my, my hair is falling out. A young woman. And I told her, and I spoke to her, I gave her some humble advice. I told her a lot of the problems that we face, it's because of what? Because of dissatisfaction. Because of discontentment. And then what? We, after we get married, after we choose our partner and we get married, then we begin to stress about, will it work out? How long will we be together? Arguments and problems that arise between husbands and wives. It said that a young man one day, who was recently married, that he decided to ask a, an older gentleman from the community about advice regarding marriage. So he made an appointment with this older gentleman, 
And the man told him, come to my home and we'll talk. I'll give you some advice. So this young man, he went to this older gentleman's home. They sat in the backyard, very beautiful backyard. And as they were sitting there, the young man, he asked the older man, he told him, listen, you've been married, you and your wife have been together, you've been married for about 50 years. I mean, that's, that's remarkable. That's great. You, you must be, you know, madly in love with each other. Tell me, what's your secret? Teach me, tell me what's going on. So the old man told him, the secret is actually very simple. You see, when my wife and I, when we first got married, we had an agreement. We made an arrangement between one another. And that is that every time we get into an argument, every time we get into a debate, every time one of us is feeling sad, we find a solution. We don't let it linger. We find an immediate solution. And the solution is that whenever I'm upset, if I'm upset, if my wife's the reason why we got into an argument, that she immediately gets up and she goes into the kitchen and she waits there until I'm calm and I'm happy. And on the other hand, if I'm the reason, if she's upset, then I get up and I go outside and I sit in the backyard and I wait until she comes down. And that son is the story of how for the past 50 years I've been living in the backyard. <laughs> the key to peace, brothers and sisters, the key to peace is attaining contentment, is being satisfied with that which we have been given. Why? Because when we are content, we are putting all of the issues in the hands of God and God knows best. وَعَسَى أَن تُكْرِهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ For me, personally, this is one of the most powerful verses of the Qur'an. They're all powerful. But this one strikes me every time I hear it, every time I read it. وَعَسَى أَن تُكْرِهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Perhaps it is that you despise something. كُرُهْ تَكْرَهُ not that you do not prefer it, but that you despise something, you hate something. But it is good for you. You, you love something, you adore something. But in fact, it is bad for you. And God knows. And you, dear servants, do not know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I know. I'm the creator. I'm the one who created this entire universe and everything. I know what's good and bad for you. I know better than you do. Perhaps you may think that you know what's going on, but in reality you don't. And so when we are content, we are in fact putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are saying, oh Allah, you know best. And as a result, you should give me what you know to be best. This is the essence of contentment. This is the essence this is the essence of satisfaction. Because life's issues never end, brothers and sisters. Life's issues never end. The hadith says by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He says, humans always want more. We always want more. The hadith says if a valley of gold is given to the son of Adam, to mankind. If he's given a pure valley of gold, imagine, tomorrow you're given ownership of an entire valley of gold, pure gold. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says even if he's given this valley, he's, tomorrow he's going to ask for a second valley. It's not enough. I, I need some more. And this causes restlessness. Because our desires are never ending. We're always looking for more. We see this in our own lives and in the, in the lives of others. Constantly wanting more, constantly. We keep wanting to go up the ladder and gain more and more. And this is why we notice that in society in general, many of us, we are victims to materialism. You buy that car that you want, tomorrow they change the body style. It no longer looks good. You want the new model, right? You want the faster car. 
you want the bigger car, you get the house you want, tomorrow you have a bigger family, you want a bigger house, right? You get the job you want, tomorrow you want a promotion, you want to go up the ladder, and on and on and on. We're constantly looking for more and more and more. This is the nature of our desires and this is the nature of life. And so it's important for us to express contentment. This is why it's important as our honorable sister, Sister Shabnam Doji was saying, it's important for us to teach our kids certain values, to instill certain values in our, ch in our children. Today, if you ask young children the price of an iPad, they'll tell you, wait, are you asking for a 32 gig or a 64 gig? And they'll tell you the exact specifications, they'll tell you the price with tax. They'll probably calculate the tax in there. You ask them the price of video games, they'll tell you. You ask them the price of this gadget or that gadget or that object, they'll tell you. Most kids, they know the price of an object, but not too many children, they know the value of an object. And there's a difference. This is why it's important for us First and foremost, as parents, to realize the importance of the value of blessings and then to instill these values in our children, to teach them that everything is a blessing from God. Everything is a blessing. And when they realize the value of things, then they become content. The hadith by the fifth imam says a practical solution to being content, to being satisfied, is not to look at those above you, but to look at those below you. And brothers and sisters, I say this about myself. I say this about myself. There are a lot of people below me. In fact, I think the vast majority of humankind are below us. Many people who survive on a dollar a day, two dollars a day. Many people who don't have uh, uh, nutrition, many children, the numbers, when we read reports about the numbers of young children under the age of five who die from malnutrition every single day, it's amazing, it's amazing. There are many people who have not been blessed the same way that we have been blessed. So instead of looking at those above, it's important for us to look at those below us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of us according to what he sees fit. And this is what it means to put our trust in Allah and this is what it means to be satisfied and content with this life. And this is what Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam she teaches us. Fatima to Zahra who was known as al-radiyah al mardiyah the one who was satisfied. The one who was content and happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon her in this life. Once again, brothers and sisters, I congratulate you on this joyous event. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and your families. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to learn and to benefit from the life of this great personality, the life of Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and to learn from her and to be able to emulate her, inshallah. Thank you. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.